Hello from Brussels, dear friends and colleagues. I would like first uh, to thank the kind invitation of the South-South Cooperation Council and Victor Sebek, and at the same time to thank him and, and the South-South Cooperation Council uh, the kind invitation to, to join the uh, policy advisory board of, of the body. It is a real pleasure and, uh, and a honor to have the opportunity to work with all of you. I would have liked really to join you all in, in Manila, but it would be impossible on this occasion. I would like really to, to do so in, in, in the future. And uh, I think the Manila Festival and Forum is an excellent stage to maintain uh, the sustainable uh, development goals on the stage in the international arena. Sometimes there are crises, especially the COVID, that have put a little bit of shadow uh, on the SDG program and agenda. I, I would like to convey to you my congratulations for this uh, occasion on, on Manila to raise again uh, the flag of uh, SDGs. Uh, a couple of hints from, from Europe, from this corner, and I would like to underline this is a corner of the world, this is not the center. In a world in which uh, the multipolar is, is, is the standard, I, I think that could be good if we manage uh, to act in this new framework. Uh, but uh, it's true that being a multipolar world, there are some trends in the international arena that are very worrying. Uh, for example, did you notice that in the past we managed the international relations using treaties, signing treaties, and now apparently we are changing treaties by sanctions. And the, the sky of the international relations is full of uh, sanctions like in these old maps of the Cold War, old maps, maps of, of the Cold War, when you see the, the missiles crossing uh, from everywhere and to everywhere, this is a, the kind of image I have in my mind when I say that now in the current situation in the international arena, we are using more sanctions than treaties, and this is a bad and very bad trend. Cultural diplomacy is, could be an enormous tool in this uh, situation. Uh, cultural diplomacy and uh, the reivindication of uh, multiculturalism could be a, an excellent stage to try to appease a little bit uh, these tensions. One of the main uh, threats that I think uh, we, we have to face uh, in the international uh, world is the, the identity policies. Instead of accepting a multicultural world, and the, the, the fact that the most of the nations are now multicultural, uh, there are this raising of the identity policies. That means uh, one region, one ethnic, one approach uh, to, the, to the life, uh, trying to exclude from uh, their own bubble and, uh, uh, any other identity. Uh, we are suffering in, in Europe uh, a rise of the extreme uh, right uh, ideas and the main umbrella of these ideas is the identity policies and for that reason I think uh, cultural diplomacy has a very important role uh, to play in this uh, environment and uh, because we have to, to work in, in this environment we have to talk of course uh, about the COVID. Uh, COVID has been a real shaking situation for, for the whole world and uh, we have to face, I don't know if we can talk plainly of post-COVID scenario, as you know, at that very moment, I'm talking to you from, from Brussels in, in, in the latest days of October, there is a racing on, the, on, the, on the, the bike again in many parts of the world of the pandemic, and we have to be aware that it's not easy to talk plainly about a post-COVID scenario. We in Europe, we did our best. It's true that at the very beginning of the pandemic, we noticed with alarm that there was a lot of things that we didn't produce in Europe and we have to import uh, in this logic of the globalization that at that very moment they were not uh, reachable. And there was a feeling of crisis uh, because uh, as the most part of the world, we bend on the idea that it was not important where a product could be produced if the uh, world trade is functioning and we could simply import things and we discovered dramatically that there was a lot of things that at, at, at the peak of the problem we, we didn't have the opportunity to bring to 
to Europe, and that has drive to this idea of the strategic autonomy. But we did our best. We put together our efforts, the 27th countries of the European Union, uh, to, 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 to face the challenge of COVID. And we managed to create a, a vaccine policy and a health policy uh, uh, beside an economic policy to try to, uh, to, to, to face the, the, the main uh, heat of the of the pandemics on the economic and the social uh, situation uh, in the countries, uh, our our approach now is of course that there is no post COVID scenario if we don't work with all the world uh, trying to face the, this uh, important uh, challenge, and we have to continue our common effort not only to produce and to try to distribute vaccines among our members, but to try to protect the whole world. Because if there is no, as we all know, it's, it's a topic a little bit, but if we don't protect the whole world, never is uh, protected, uh, really. And for that reason, we are proposing some things that I would like to convey to you. The first one, I don't know if say the mainly one, but the most long-term approach is to, to have an international treaty on, on pandemics, a legal binding uh, corp, a legal binding, uh, 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 framework in which uh, every country under the umbrella of the World Health Organization could approach eventually uh, another risk in the future of that kind of risk. And, and for that, uh, we have to to put all the, what we call the intelligent hub uh, 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 in March. That means uh, that means the the whole intelligence of the whole world has to be put together to try to finish the situation and to avoid and prevent other future situations. And, and, and this uh, idea of the intelligence hub is a call for the whole world. Uh, it's a call for the North, for the South, for any kind of political regime. We have to put together our, all our knowledge and intelligence to try to avoid a situation like uh, we had in the, in the recent, in the recent past. And for that, coordination is vital coordination is vital, uh, and we have to bend again on the idea of the, of the, the support to the science approach. Uh, we, have, we have noticed in all of us a kind of surge of irrationalism again, a kind of creating doubts on the science, creating doubts on the, on the, on the scientific knowledge, and this is a disaster. This is a disaster because, because the rationalism for the last centuries in the whole world has been the, the, the most secure uh, uh, approach we, we, we could have to, to face any kind of challenge. And for that reason, to, to support this scientific knowledge, not only funding, but putting on the state that we have to rely on our knowledge or, or, or coming from science uh, to, to, to take care of the, that kind of of issues. And then the solidarity, of course. The solidarity among any developed country and any developing countries. This is a kind of network. This is not a north-south issue. We have to work uh, taking into account that solidarity is a complex and multi-directional network. It's not only like it was in the past a north-south uh, direction. And for that reason, we have to remove the, the obstacles uh, the, for, for having a, a complete protection uh, of the world. Of course, of course, exporting doses. We have, to, we have to improve the production of vaccine. We have to improve the prices, and we have to improve the channels of distribution to the whole, to the whole world to export doses. Of course, financing the COVAX uh, Covax bottlenecks because we, 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 are, we are noticing there is a problem in logistics now all over the world, and this is going to affect also the distribution of vaccines. We have to be aware that the most valuable thing, the most valuable uh, uh, good we have to move uh, all over the world is vaccines, not other. Of course, there are there are other very important uh, products that we have to we have to distribute all over the world, but vaccines now have to have the preference uh, to reach any, any corner of, of the world. And, and 
Europe and the Western and the developed world has to fulfill its commitment on donations of vaccines. Uh, Europe has not fulfilled completely its previous uh, uh, commitments. Uh, the, the, the level of donations has reached only a third, more or less, that, that we, we promised uh, some months ago. But uh, the European Union reacted and uh, the, Re the European Union has bought more vaccines and I think we are going to, to be, we are going to fulfill our commitments in the, in the, coming, uh, in the coming months. Um, then the, there are other projects, for example in Africa we are having a, pro a pro the European Union is having a program with some private financial partners to try to, to, to create the capacity to produce vaccines uh, on the field and this is uh, a, a, another uh, wall against this uh, vaccines apartheid that some of uh, the African leaders uh, talk about uh, uh, recently uh, because uh, we have to be aware that in the low income countries only 2% of the population has been vaccinated. In the higher uh, level uh, of income uh, the, the percentage is 75, uh, sorry 50 in the European Union is 75 and we have to be aware of that situation, we have to reinforce our commitments uh, to try to spread uh, the vaccines all over the world and, and to be prepared to possible eventual uh, future crisis. This idea of One Health, it could be a good idea as an umbrella uh, to, to cover our, our current uh, worries and probably the future one. What, the idea of One Health, One Global Health, is trying to link the environment animal health and human health, trying to prevent this complicated uh, uh, transfer of virus from the animal world to the human world. And this, uh, this, uh, this has been a key issue in the origin of this uh, COVID uh, crisis. And we have to, to try to prevent that kind of thing. And, and this kind of, of label, one health, that means the health of the planet, the health of the environment, and the animal health and the, and the human health could be a good agenda in, for the coming years for any international uh, body. In, I'm asking you all, uh, dear colleagues, uh, gathering in, in uh, Manila to try to incorporate this idea of One Health in our agendas, in the South-South Cooperation Council, of course, in any other uh, body related to the international arena with the United Nations, any other regional uh, uh, actor it could be a, a good moment to try to, to, to create this political agenda for the coming months. Well, these are my, my uh, ideas and my, my hints to, to Manila Forum, and it's a pleasure to, uh, to have the opportunity at least to address to all of you with these ideas from Brussels, from the European Union. And I would like, as I said in the beginning, I would like really to, to join you all in, in the coming future. Uh, anywhere in the in the world, uh, it's a pleasure. Have a good day. Have a good uh, forum, and uh, till very very soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot.